Programming a PLC Step 7 Micro or Win32 is the program software used with the S7200 PLC to create the PLC operating program. Step 7 consists of a number of instructions that must be arranged in a logical order to obtain the desired PLC operation. These instructions are divided into three groups, standard instructions, special instructions, and high-speed instructions. Standard instructions Standard instructions consists of instructions that are found in most programs. Standard instructions include, timer, counter, math, logical, increment-decrement invert, move, and block instructions. Special instructions Special instructions are used to manipulate data. Special instructions include shift, table, find, conversion, for slash next, and real-time instructions. High-speed instructions High-speed instructions allow for events and interrupts to occur independent of the PLC scan time. These include high-speed counters, interrupts, output, and transmit instructions. It is not the purpose of this text to explain all of the instructions and capabilities. A few of the more common instructions necessary for a basic understanding of PLC operation will be discussed. PLC operation is limited only by the hardware capabilities and the ingenuity of the person programming it. Micro or Win32 The software can be run offline or online. Offline programming allows the user to edit the ladder diagram and perform a number of maintenance tasks. The PLC does not need to be connected to the programming device in this mode. Online programming requires the PLC to be connected to the programming device. In this mode program changes are downloaded to the PLC. In addition, status of the input slash output elements can be monitored the cpu can be started stopped or reset symbols in order to understand the instructions a plc is to carry out an understanding of the language is necessary the language of plc ladder logic consists of a commonly used set of symbols that represent control components and instructions Contacts One of the most confusing aspects of PLC programming for first-time users is the relationship between the device that controls a status bit and the programming function that uses a status bit. Two of the most common programming functions are the normally open, no, contact and the normally closed, and C, contact. Symbolically, power flows through these contacts when they are closed. The normally open contact, no, is true, closed, when the input or output status bit controlling the contact is 1. The normally closed contact, NC, is true, closed, when the input or output status bit controlling the contact is 0. Coils Coils represent relays that are energized when power flows to them. When a coil is energized, it causes a corresponding output to turn on by changing the state of the status bit controlling that output to 1. That same output status bit may be used to control normally open and normally closed contacts elsewhere in the program. Boxes Boxes represent various instructions or functions that are executed when power flows to the box. Typical box functions are timers, counters, and math operations. Entering elements Control elements are entered in the ladder diagram by positioning the cursor and selecting the element from a list. In the following example the cursor has been placed in the position to the right of I0.2. 
A coil was selected from a pull-down list and inserted in this position. And an operation. Each rung or network on a ladder represents a logic operation. The following programming example demonstrates an and operation. Two contact closures and one output coil are placed on network 1. They were assigned addresses I0.0, I0.1, and Q0.0. Note that in the statement list a new logic operation always begins with a load instruction, LD. In this example I0.0, input 1, and, A in the statement list, I0.1, input 2, must be true in order for output Q0.0, output 1, to be true. It can also be seen that I0.0 and I0.1 must be true for Q0.0 to be true by looking at the function block diagram representation. Another way to see how an AND function works is with a Boolean logic diagram. In Boolean logic an AND gate is represented by a number of inputs on the left side. In this case there are two inputs. The output is represented on the right side. It can be seen from the table that both inputs must be a logic one in order for the output to be a logic one. An OR operation. In this example an OR operation is used in network one. It can be seen that if either input I0.2, input 3, or O in the statement list, input I0.3, input 4, or both are true, then output Q0.1, output 2, will be true. Another way to see how an OR function works is with a Boolean logic diagram. The symbol differs slightly from an AND function. The OR function is represented by a number of inputs on the left side. In this case there are two inputs. The output is represented on the right side. It can be seen from the table that any input can be a logic one in order for the output to be a logic one. Testing a program. Once a program has been written it needs to be tested and debugged. One way this can be done is to simulate the field inputs with an input simulator, such as the one made for the S7200. The program is first downloaded from the programming device to the CPU. The selector switch is placed in the run position. The simulator switches are operated and the resulting indication is observed on the output status indicator lamps. Status functions. After a program has been loaded and is running in the PLC, the actual status of ladder elements can be monitored using Step 7 Micro or WIN32 software. The standard method of showing a ladder element is by indicating the circuit condition it produces when the device is in the denergized or non-operated state. In the following illustration input 1, I0.0, is programmed as a normally open, no, contact. In this condition, power will not flow through the contacts to the output, Q0.0. When viewing the ladder diagram in the status mode, control elements that are active, or true, logic 1, are highlighted. In the example shown the toggle switch connected to input 1 has been closed. Power can now flow through the control element associated with input 1, I0.0, and activate the output, Q0.0. The lamp will illuminate. Forcing. Forcing is another useful tool in the commissioning of an application. It can be used to temporarily override the input or output status of the application in order to test and debug the program. The force function can also be used to override discrete output points. 
The force function can be used to skip portions of a program by enabling a jump instruction with a forced memory bit. Under normal circumstances the toggle switch, shown in the illustration below, would have to be closed to enable input 1, I0.0, and turn on the output light. Forcing enables input 1 even though the input toggle switch is open. With input 1 forced high the output light will illuminate. When a function is forced the control bit identifier is highlighted. The element is also highlighted because it is on. The following table shows the appearance of ladder elements in the off, forced, and on condition.